Hey there everyone, this is Jacob again, and this is going to be the third and last video for week two, day one. This is going to be a intro to DAP Starter, and so I know that all the videos prior to this have been very uh, flow-centric and, and cadence-centric, but we're going to actually start diving into DAP Starter now, which is super exciting for us, the Decentology team, and hopefully should be exciting for you. So to start off, let's go to dapstarter.decentology.com. And once you're at this page, you're going to see, you know, it says Decentology Dapp Starter. And so what you can do is if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a bunch of different options for stuff like blockchains, like there's Flow, Solana, Avalanche, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, for our purposes, we're going to click Flow because we're developing on Flow. And the Cadence Smart Contract language is already selected. And we're going to click uh, Vanilla JavaScript for our framework so that, you know, you don't have to know React. And then we're going to go down here to smart contract features. And so to kind of give you a background of what DAP Starter is, it's essentially a full stack um, DAP that allows you to just simply download something like a foundation off of here and have a fully working DAP with a client, a backend, and all your scripts, contracts, and transactions in a very short amount of time. And you'll see that here. So... There's multiple options here. There's there's ballot voting, which is, uh, let's see what this says, create a simple voting system with a ballot. Uh, there's custom NFT, which is user-created NFT with customizable metadata options. And then you'll get to this one, which is fast forward. So this is what you're going to click when you come to dapster.decentology.com because we're going to be using the fast forward foundation during this week to complete our quests. So after we click this, let's go down to DAP customization. And we'll have to enter a DAP name. So I'll just put um, Jacob's DAP. Okay. And then you click create DAP. Now it might ask you to log in and you can just do that through any Google account or anything like that. And then this will, you know, take you to this page once you click it again. So once we get to this page, we can actually view um, the GitHub repository that it created for us. If we go, you know, to our, our browser and we paste this in. This is my DAP that it generated. And so you can see there's a bunch of stuff here already for us. Um, and on this GitHub page, you'll see there's a readme that says my DAP. And in order to get DAP Starter working on your computer, make sure that you go through all the prere prerequisites here, including Visual Studio Code, Studio Code Node.js, having Yarn, and of course the Flow CLI, although all of you should already have the Flow CLI from week one. And there will be some uh, simple, uh, you know, instructions here, but I will walk through uh, these with you. So if we go back here, you can either download this as a zip, but I like to just copy this. And then I'm going to go to my terminal and just do git clone and then paste that link. And once this happens, you'll see that, you know, there's a, there's, there's a bunch of funky names and yours will probably be named something weird, but you know, mine was named fancy uh, blue fahi or whatever. So once you get it to here, I'm going to clear this again. Once you CD into your DAP starter um, DAP, what you're going to do is just type yarn. Um, and what this is going to do is install all the dependencies that are associated with your DAP. And this might take a few minutes. And um, if you don't have yarn, make sure that you do and follow those prerequisites so that this actually installs. And so because this is going to take a minute, I'm going to pull up a Flappy Bird game and try and get to 10 flaps here. And I, and, I, and, I, and I failed at one. Well, I stink. Okay, well, we're just going to come back to this because I'm terrible at Flappy Bird. Or maybe we'll try another one. As you can see, you can do anything you wish in your free time while you're yarn installing your project. Ooh, ooh. And I, and I failed at five. Okay, well, we'll X out of Flappy Bird and just come back to our yarn here. And so this should take just another um, 10 seconds. And you might say, well, Jacob, you could just cut this out of the video. And my answer to that is no, I want you to sit here with me and suffer through the hour of your installing together because that makes the experience so much nicer. Okay, cool. So we're done. So now that we've yarn installed, you should see, you know, maybe a success and we're good to go now. So I'm going to clear this. And our next step is to yarn start. So for some of you, when you go to do yarn start, watch what might happen. Now, some of you, this might work, but for some of you, if you do yarn start, 
you're going to see something like this, where it says uh, E access permission denied. And if I scroll up, you'll see E access permission denied, open user local, something like this. Now, if you get this and it stops, this is simply because for some reason, the flow team pushed out a version of the CLI that um, you know denies uh, Yarn starting here. And if you're on Mac, uh, I'll clear this again, you can simply fix this by doing sudo yarn start. Um, and this will work. So I'll show you what this looks like. You know, this will boot up. And if you're on Windows, just make sure that you're running a terminal with administrator purposes, and that will bypass that. So here, we can see a bunch of stuff happening, and I'll widen the window. So we're creating a bunch of test accounts for us already on the blockchain. So remember last week with the Flow CLI, you had to create all these accounts yourself. But the beauty about Dapp Starter is that it does all this for you. So it starts the Flow emulator right up here. It starts the Flow emulator, and then it creates all these accounts for you so you don't have to do it. And then it's going to start automatically deploying the non-fungible token contract, the kitty items contract, the kibble contract, and the kitty items market contract all on its own. So you don't have to worry about account creation. You don't have to worry about deploying contracts. It completely does this for you. And then you'll see it says watching interactions, transpiling scripts and transactions. So it's also making sure that all of your transactions and scripts are ready to go for you. Now, if you see compiled successfully, hopefully in your browser on localhost 5000, you will see something that looks like this, or you might see something that looks like this when it first opens up, dappiness. And so hopefully, you know, you are experiencing some level of dappiness, and I'll show you what we're gonna be using for our um, quest this week. So if you go to the UI harness, the UI harness is basically a client uh, test framework that you can use um, to, you know, run your transactions and scripts without having to do it from the flow CLI in, in, in some sort of terminal. So if we click here, this is our fast forward foundation, right? And the description is, this is kitty items for the participants of the fast forward bootcamp. So this is good for you. And you'll click view. So what you see here is each of these little rectangles here, these, the, these things that I'm going over my, with my mouse right now, this is what we call an action card, okay? And each action card runs either a transaction or a script. If it has a orange submit button like this, that means it's a transaction. And if it has a green view button like this, that means it's a script. And it says view because we're, you know, reading data from our contracts. And so it'll return something. And if it's this orange submit button, then it's a transaction and we're submitting the transaction to the blockchain. So this should hopefully be really cool to see because last week when we were doing the flow CLI, Morgan did a fantastic job, but it must have still been annoying to have to create all those accounts on your own and also do, you know, flow transaction send and then put in all those arguments on your own, or you would have to do flow scripts execute. Instead, we can simply just click on which account we want to sign the transaction. So for example, in day one, we're going to uh, set up our kibble you know, for an account. And I'll go over what this means in a second, but let's say we want the admin to sign this transaction and we're gonna submit this. And you'll see that if it succeeds, there's a green transaction hash here. And we can also go to our terminal and see, look at this gold star. This gold star says transaction executed. And this means that our transaction successfully worked. Now, sometimes you'll see a red exclamation mark here and that means it's an error. But because we got a gold star, that means the transaction went through. And so um, for day one, all you're going to have to worry about is these three action cards. Kibble, set up account, uh, and, and they're all marked with day one as well. Kibble, get balance, and kibble, get supply. So if you try and go on to the future days, like day two and day three, it won't work. And that's because we haven't set them up yet. So don't worry about that. We will get into that later this week, or starting tomorrow, actually. So what this is doing, kibble, set up account, is this is giving whichever account that we select, which whoever's a signer, it's giving that person the ability to store kibble, which is our fungible token. And so um, I'll give you an example. So because we just set up the admin, you can see that we can actually look what the kibble balance is for the admin account. Let's view it. And the kibble balance is zero. And this makes sense because we haven't given the admin any kibble yet, right? We haven't minted any kibble. 
And if you look at kibble get supply, this is the total amount of kibble that's in your DAP so far. And it's zero because we haven't created any. Um, and let's see what happens, right? So in our terminal, we got three gold stars for each of those three things that we just ran. But let's try and get an error. Let's say that I want to get the kibble balance for Alice's account, but we haven't set it up yet. We should get an error. And let's see what happens. If we click view, you'll see error message. Cadence runtime error execution failed. Could not borrow balance reference to the vault. And the reason it's saying that is because we haven't actually set up Alice yet in our setup account. And you know you might remember this from last week where if you didn't give an, an account a collection, they couldn't store pictures, right? So this is very similar where if we don't give the account a kibble uh, collection, or in this case, it's called a vault, we won't be able to give them kibble. So we would have to go to Alice and set up Alice's account. And once that goes through, you will go to Alice and we'll run this again. And now it works, right? And we get a gold star in our terminal. So for day one, just see and make sure that you can run these three action cards and go to your terminal and make sure that you see gold stars for each of them. And if you can get these to work, then you've um, completely uh, already uh, completed your quest for DAP Starter so far. And don't worry about the rest of this. And also, more importantly, don't worry about the code that's inside DAP Starter. Or, or inside your DAP. We will worry about all of that tomorrow, so don't worry about that yet. Okay? So thank you for coming to my TED Talk about DAP Starter, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some exciting times. Thank you.